Welcome to Publishing Power. My name is Joellen with First Editing. And today we have with us back by popular demand, Teresa de Grobois. She's an international speaker sought by entrepreneurs and large corporations wanting to better understand how local gossip can suddenly turn into an epidemic word of mouth. And she specializes in the topics of influence and success. So Teresa has a proven track record in understanding word of mouth epidemics having taken three books to bestseller status in only eight months. So that is impressive. So Teresa teaches business and marketing courses around the globe, including teaching courses to start up entrepreneurs in developing countries. As the chair of the Evolutionary Business Council, Teresa leads an international invitation only council of speakers and influencers who are dedicated to teaching the principles of success. So again, welcome back, Teresa. We're so glad to have you here today. We want to talk about becoming a bestseller. Welcome. Good to be back. I appreciate it. Oh, this is awesome. I was following through your website and I saw all the fantastic things there with Mastering Influence. And one of the things that caught my eyes, and we've, we've talked about this and had some feedback here, is becoming a bestseller. You have two programs there and you have a system. And I am a woman who loves systems and putting them into action and how they work. So I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your system and mentoring and how it works that you've helped others, including yourself, obviously, to become a bestseller. Can you tell us a little bit about your mentoring program that you have? One of the reasons I set up this program is that there's a lot of bad information out there. Yeah. I had probably spent $100,000 on different courses and learnings that were getting me nowhere and actually damaging my credibility and, and causing a lot of bad gossip before I really figured out, okay, there isn't really anyone in the industry who's teaching how to become a best-selling author from a standpoint of, of not shoving aside the whole conversation around quality and needing a really good book and, uh, and making sure that there's sufficient merit that the book deserves to be on the bestseller lists. You know, there's a lot of people out there teaching things like, oh, just get all your cousins to buy the book in the same minute and, uh, and you can kind of game Amazon and, and blip it onto the list and it'll blip back off and then you can call yourself a best-selling author. And, you know, more power to you if you want to do games like that. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like walking out in the middle of the NHL rink at halftime and futzing with the puck for 30 seconds and then declaring to the world you're a professional hockey player. Like, it's just the rest of the world knows you're not. It's obvious there's, there's not the brand and the credentials set up around you. So I, I really wanted authors who deserve to be in the limelight and deserve to have their work out there and seen by the world to really understand how does this industry work? How mm -hmm. does the whole notion of best-selling author work? What are the norms of, of the, the whole way where both epidemics happen? What's the etiquette you have to understand? And how do you keep your book there once you get it there? You know, like, it's really inspiring and uh, and amazing when you have friends and colleagues that help keep your book on the bestseller list just because they love you, you know, and, and they admire your work. It's cool when that happens. And so I wanted other people to really understand the principles of how all that works. Good, good. So um, I know you talk about writing and publishing a book and quality, of course, and we deal with that as editors here. Tell us a little bit about testing your book with an audience. How does that work? Yeah, that's such a, an important thing to do. And, you know, it's important to know, first of all, who your audience is, you know, and if your audience is anybody who breathes, um, then you're too wide, you know, like even J.K. Rawlings, who sold billions of books, had a target audience. It was young readers. Now, that doesn't mean to say that your book won't span other audiences, but you got to understand who your primary target is first, because they'll be the first people to buy the book. They'll be the people who create the word of mouth epidemic. They'll be, be the people who are like the forerunners, the champions of your book. You know, J.K. Rowling didn't get huge until book three. And it was her avid readers on book one that told all their schoolmates and other young readers to buy book two. And then by the time there was this minor word of mouth epidemic going and parents were also liking the books, and then movie rights were sold, et cetera. And, you know, everything exploded when book three came out and the movie rights got sold, right? So it's important to understand that there is a specific target audience you want to be going after. And your test readers should represent that target audience. So, they, you know, you might have them in your inner circle, like, you know, mm -hmm. but if your test audience or if your target audience is, for example, uh, 
you know, young readers age 15 to 25, then you don't want to have your aunt and uncle on your test group. You want to have your nieces and nephews and vice versa, right? So understand who your target audience is and make sure your test readers are representative of that. Right, right, of course, and get some feedback there. So you also have, uh, you, you've mentioned in, in what I've read here that you talk about creating a plan to profit. And I think that's something, you know, that of course needs to be directed from the very beginning. Can you kind of give us some insight there? Yeah, and I, I've got a whole module on this in my How to Become a Bestselling Author program because it's so important because there's a lot of misconceptions around the whole world of money and books, mm -hmm. right? You know, a lot, a lot of authors have this uh, notion that's been put in their head by Hollywood that it's, you can be like Beatrix Potter, you write a few books and then you retire on the royalties, right? And right. that whole framework went out with the dawn of the internet, right? And, and the entrance of the world of self-publishing because there's now more books published in a week than used to be published in an entire decade. Right. And so the publishing industry has significantly changed. The money is not in the book itself. Right. The money is in everything that comes after the book. And so it's important to understand how this industry works and how books work and what your role is as the author to make the whole system work. Because if you th think that you can just write a book and then the world will beat a path to your door and uh, it'll get published and, and then you're done then it's sort of like thinking, well, I can be a really good piano player, but I never actually have to go and play in front of everyone. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, you know, yeah, you could be a really good author, but if nobody ever reads your work and you don't take the steps to get your work out in front of the world, then, um, then you're not going anywhere. And, you know, one of the reasons I created my How to Become a Bestselling Author program is there's, there's a lot of really gifted, extremely talented artists out there whose work is going unnoticed because they have these self-sabotaging beliefs that have been ingrained by society that somehow they're a lesser author or something's wrong with them if they have to actually, um, you know, peek out the window and let the world see them, you know, and, um, and there's this sort of misconception, self-sabotage that's going on with a lot of writers. And if that's you, you know who I'm talking to. You know, that if you think uh, the word marketing is a bad word, if you kind of get it <laughs> at the word marketing, or if you think uh, that you should have to do anything to self-promote, if you think self-promotion is dirty and shameful and ugly, then you've got, you know, what Randy Gage would refer to as mind viruses. You've got self-sabotaging beliefs that the world has creeped into your head. And you're not doing the world any favors because the world deserves to read your work your work deserves to have a movie made out of it and uh, and that's important then to understand how the industry works and what the etiquette is because you're making it hard for people if that's right. you and so you know not one of the reasons i partnered my um i usually include my group mentorship program which is live calls i come on and i include unlimited email coaching for authors who work with me in my programs is because a lot of authors the writing ain't the hard part it's the overcoming all the negative belief systems, all the, the um, paradigms they've got in their head that are getting in their way and self-sabotaging them. It's that stuff that really makes the difference between you know, them being an author that nobody knows about and an author who's actually really causing powerful shift and change in the world through the stories that they tell. Hmm. You know, it's interesting you mention that because quite often I think we talk about book coaches and we talk about writing coaches but what you're talking about is an author coach the actual the person behind it all and how they're thinking and what they're doing and what they believe and what they're you know creating out there through their own their actions not just the writing not just the the story or the manuscript but really you know the whole world that surrounds it which is part of being an author it's not just having a book it's it's becoming that author. So that's a, that's very fun. Nowadays, there are lots of publishing options. Um, there's self-publishing, there's traditional publishing, there's uh, hybrids, and, and we have some podcasts about that. So how do you decide which is the way for you? Have you, have you 
thought through that or I mean, how do you help? Yeah, this is another area, you know, and, and another reason that I, I created my How to Become a Bestselling Author program, because a lot of the biggest names in our industry are ab abandoning the traditional publishing model yeah. and using some version of self-publishing because the publishing industry has kind of lost touch with what is really going on in the world and what authors need. There are exceptions, yeah. um, some notable exceptions, but in general, there's a lot of misinformation and it's like the publishing industry itself, the mainstream publishing industries, you see a lot of publishing houses that are dying right now because yeah. they haven't figured out how influence really works and what the world really needs, right? Bottom line, storytelling is one of the most powerful tools of influence we have on this planet, right? The telling of stories has us look at ourselves as a society. It reminds us what we're afraid of. It reminds us what we want. Um, it reminds us the importance of love and connection and friendship and reminds us the importance of courage and putting ourselves out there. Stories are an incredibly powerful tool, but in and of themselves, they don't walk off the bookshelves. There does need to be an industry and a structure around the publishing of books. And um, the mainstream publishing industry, a lot of them have lost touch with what's really going on in society and how books really move and, and what causes a book to not only become a bestseller, but then have movie rights sold or, or, or um, go on to do bigger and better things, longer word of mouth epidemics. If you're in the nonfiction world, what creates the book that creates the icon, you know? Right. And um, it's important to understand those things. And so your publishing strategy should have the long game in mind, not the short game. Like I, I meet a lot of authors who are like, oh, I, I really want to be published by Hay, Hay House. And I say, well, why? And they say, well, there's so much credibility in being published by Hay House. And they're not wrong. Like there's credibility in be pub being published by Hay House. Hay House actually has a self-publishing arm, by the way, that's really good for people who want to do the self-publishing route. And um, I have a world of respect for Hay House. They're one of the more ethical publishers out there. But by the point you're a number one international bestseller, nobody cares who published you. Yeah. It's sort of like really, really worrying about um, where your kids go to primary school. But it's really the university degree that matters. You get what I'm saying? So, so it's not wrong to want to have a great publisher or a great relationship with a publisher, but there's a lot of people that are actually taking over. In fact, one of the things I teach in my program, I teach people how to make their decisions. I don't tell you what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole last half of my How to Become a Bestling Author uh, Level 1 program is all around how to choose the correct publishing strategy for you, including some authors simply choose to do the entire publishing process themselves. Like they hire a cover designer, they hire a book formatter, they hire editors, um, and they just do all of that as subcontracts, go get their own ISBN and, um, you know, set them up either through uh, Library Archives Canada or, um, or Boker in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard to just go through the steps. Like I've got a module that sh will show you how to do that if you want. But the more important decision is to decide, does that serve you? Right. Like, which is the strategy that serves you best? And there is no one size fits all. That's like saying anybody can wear this shirt and it's going to look awesome on you. No, you got to understand what's the end game for your book. And, and a fiction writer whose end game might be, boy, I really want my book to be turned into a TV series or my series of books to be turned into a t TV series as a very different end game than a nonfiction writer who's writing to a business crowd. And so the strategy that really works for one of those people is not going to be the best strategy for the other. Mm -hmm. So what I teach people is how to understand the industry and understand how decisions are made in our industry so that you can determine the, the um, publishing strategy that is going to be the strongest fit for you. Right. And that all comes at the back. It comes way early in the game when you're writing. So it's really good. Um, and of course, after publishing, then it's the ultimate very it's so important launch, you know, having the audience and launching and preparing. So how do we launch? How do we get onto that bestseller list? And I know those are big questions, but kind of tell us a little bit yeah. more of how, how you have helped people in the past achieve this. Yeah. Well, and you know, one of the reasons I set up my, how to become a bestselling author level two program, which is all about launching and getting onto the bestseller list was because there's a lot of people out there that will just manage your launch for you. And it, it's not wrong to just hire a launch manager. But there's certain things in life that if you continue to delegate them, you never learn certain principles. 
you know right. it's sort of like the rich man who always delegates the buying of his kids birthday presents to his personal assistant never quite get gets that connection with his kids right and best selling book launches are similar to that cuz they're all about relationships <gasps> isn't that interesting it's not about hardcore marketing and branding and marketing campaigns not that those aren't part of it mm -hmm. but that's the little piece of it the big piece of it is wow you birthed a new baby into the world who are you going to give the precious care of this baby into from a standpoint of who do you want interacting with this book mm -hmm. Now you've birthed this precious flame into the world. There's something you want it to do in the world. You want it to create excitement in people's lives or laughter in people's lives or education in people's lives or all of the above in some cases. So who are those people you want to build relationships with that you're going to entrust your baby to? Yeah. And if you just go hire someone off to do your campaign, it's not that it won't work, but the odds of your book having longevity and really sticking are a lot less likely than if you're the active parent who's really engaged in making sure that this baby that you birthed is properly brought up and brought out to the world. Right. So one of the reasons I teach this program as a self-study program is, and you know, I often include my mass influence program as a, as a bonus in this is because it really is all about influence. Mm -hmm. And influence is as simple as breathing when you get it. When you get that it's all about relationships, not smarmy, oh, I've got to pander to this person, oh, shoot me in the head, ew. Like, you know, it's not that. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's the opposite of influence, right? <laughs> True influence is you go out and find those people that you deeply respect and deeply love and admire, and you start building relationships with them. And it's just a matter of knowing how. Right, like, because we all learned one set of rules as kids in the sandbox, right? Um, you know, we learned, I do this for you and you do that for me. That kind of introduced a tit for tat kind of thinking that really is kind of very, it's kindergarten. Like, it's not really the way the world works. It works, but it's not really what is relationship mastery, right? Mm -hmm. And then we started learning things when we started networking in business. Like, we learned it was a good idea to offer to buy a co colleague coffee or lunch. And you only have to phone up uh, the head of a magazine uh, that's really successful and offer to buy them coffee or lunch and faster than you can say gatekeeper. You'll learn there's a different set of rules for the highly influential, right? And so one of the reasons that I wrote my book and created these courses was to help good people who really just want to bring something special and precious to the world, understand how influence works. And what your baby's going to be up against when you introduce your baby to the world and how to be a good parent and really steward your project out there in the work so that everyone who's interacting with it are people that you do love and respect and admire and want to give the care of your baby to. Right. And I, I know we talked about this before when we talked about your book, Mass Influence, and, you know, how that affects people. But I think we should talk about it again, you know, the secret that you talk that behind those who are successfully generating the recognition and promotion of their book, what, what are they doing? What's the difference there? You say, don't offer to buy the, the coffee. Um, don't try to take up their time, but what is the, the secret that you can offer well, us? Today? They really understand the principle that to get influence, you got to give influence, mm -hmm. right? So the best way to approach an influencer is to have something of influence to offer them, right? I mean, this is where most people have this, you know, a lot of authors even resist going on social media because they think, oh, I could never self-promote, shoot me in the head. That's so smarmy, right? And you're right. Your, your social media is not to sell you. Mm. Your social media is like the apple pie. You take the new neighbor when you want to meet the new neighbor, right? It's your first line of being able to shout out to the world people you deeply respect and admire. Right, so one of the best things you can do as a writer is set up channels where you can uh, promote other people who are doing great work out there. Right. You know, um, do a YouTube channel, start a blog where you review other people's books. Um, uh, be a connector, connect people with people they need to get to. Start a podcast, you know, and you don't have to be inauthentic about it. You know, I'm. I'm really blessed that I'm in the point that I now get way more requests for interviews than any human being could ever do in a month, you know, and that, that's the <laughs> gift of running an organization like the Evolutionary Business Council, because they're always recommending me to shows and stuff. 
so uh, you know it's an interesting position to be in that i can actually turn down podcasts and shows and mm -hmm. i don't do it necessarily based on reach i do it based on do i really resonate with that person like Joel and I would come on your show any day of the week. I love who you are for the writing community. I love what you teach. You're so beautiful. You're so authentic. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I, you know, I can be real on your show. I would never want to be on someone's show where I'm just like, Oh, I hate everything about them. And Ooh, do I have to post this show on my social media? Like, no, say no to that stuff. Go on the stuff you love. Right. Right. And that's where influence comes from help the people who deserve your help and right. don't worry about the rest. Like let them go, ignore them. Don't give them your energy. Don't even pay attention to them, mm -hmm. you know, help the people who deserve it and, um, and watch what starts coming back to you. It's really quite amazing. That's um, a, a big part of my, how to become a bestselling author level two program is right. all about developing those relationships, real relationships, beautiful, mm -hmm. fun, awesome relationships. So it's all about authenticity. I know you talk about a lot about that, but it is really, yeah. yeah. So we're trying to build this and we're gonna get that influence and we're gonna start promoting people. Um, what's some of the mistakes you see people making out there as authors and you know, since we're not talking about the book or the manuscript or the, you know, we're talking about good quality manuscript by somebody who's sincere and authentic, mm -hmm. what is the mistake they might be making with these influencers? You know, I think the biggest self-sabotage I see with authors and special, especially is they think a book is not a business. In fact, a lot of them like even feel like business or marketing or sales or words like that are almost like dirty words. Like you, you almost see them flinch. It's like, wow, oh, you know, and, um, and just know that somewhere in your youth, you picked up some self-sabotaging beliefs. Mm -hmm because you ran into unethical businesses or schmarmy marketers or, or people that somehow business or marketing or sales is bad. And it's like, no, sometimes sociopaths and bad people do that stuff, but that doesn't mean marketing and sales and business is bad. In fact, as an author, if you want your book to succeed, there is a, an element of, and I love what Charmaine Hannon teaches in this. She teaches a course called your book is a business. Yeah. Right. And so it's important to understand that there is a holistic game you're playing and uh, writing and, and enjoying the decadence of writing. Cause I'm a writer too. I love it. You know, one of my favorite things to do in the morning is to wake up and, you know, pull my laptop into bed and blog mm -hmm. and write in bed. To me, that's like heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's 50% of your role though. Right. The other 50% is okay you've got this baby and you birthed it and now you have your joy it's there but now you've got to be its parent and you've got to make sure that you protect it and encourage it and get it out there into the world interacting in the world and that's your job too and that my friend is a business and if that feels eh to you then really look in the mirror and do some work work with a coach or come into my mentorship program and start looking at your self-sabotaging beliefs that might be getting in your way of really leaving legacy in the world and making change and impact with your work. Hmm. So good to hear because it is, we have so many book coaches, as I said, so many people working on the manuscript, but really it's the captain of the ship. We need to be safe with that person. Are they going to get us to our destination that we have envisioned here? Or are we just, you know, hopping on a boat to nowhere? Um, so again, that's really great. I think, having a coach, an author coach, as opposed to just a, a book or a writing coach. Um, you know, we can work on our craft, but we also need to work on our, our self limitations and our ability to create success. So that's, that's why I love talking to you. And I, I like hearing that so people can get on that bestseller list. It's really everyone's dream. And that bestseller list is where we go. So how do we make sure we don't self sabotage on the way? Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Tell us a little bit more. I, I really want people to feel like they know and understand what you have here. I know you have a, you have two parts. They're both 12 week programs of becoming a bestseller. So can you tell us just a little bit about that? And we talked about your mastering influence a little bit, but tell us all, all about that and more. Yeah. Well, my two programs, how to become a bestselling author. Level one is all about writing and publishing. We get your book written, polished and published. And then level two is all around how do you get your book on the bestseller list? What does a launch look like? And, and what are the main ingredients of a launch? 
And it's set up as a self-study program. You can do it as fast or as slow as you want, but it's designed to be, you do a module a week and then you go away and do the work in that module. And then I include my uh, advanced group mentorship program as part of the package. That's a $5,700 program if it's sold on its own. And that's a call a month where I bring in other experts in the industry and we talk about specific challenges and you can actually be coached live by these experts on the industry on your specific projects. Nice. I give unlimited email coaching. So anytime you're stuck, you email me. I just want you to have listened to the recordings first so that we're on a common page when we work on your project. Mm -hmm. And I, I, my programs are 100% guaranteed. So if you do the work and do the program as designed and you do not hit bestseller status at the end of the program, in fact, if your goal is number one international bestseller status, I will work with you until you achieve that goal. So if you do the program as designed and don't achieve your goal, I will refund 100% of your money all the way back to level one. Can't beat so, that. Um, and I've never had a student fail. If you don't quit on me, I won't quit on you. That's awesome. I, I mean, there's just, that's a lot of confidence there and you, the proof is in the pudding. We know you've got your book, your book behind you there and uh, all the bestsellers. So again, I encourage everyone to please check out where links here below and take a look and meet with Teresa. But this is really learning how to remove those limitations. And I think coaching is always, there's so many good coaches out there in the world, but if becoming an author, an author, not a writer, but an actual successfully self-published or published, traditionally published author, then put the work in, commit and invest in yourself because this is the best investment you can make. You've already written the book. So thank you so much for coming on Teresa today. It was fantastic meeting with you once again. It was a joy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on.